this next piece is <clears throat> also from Have Space Cat Will Travel. It's called On a Hill Far Away, and it is a dead old ladies detective agency short story, which is set in the world of my novel Amazing Grace, which is a very personal book for me because it is set in the small town where I grew up in the upper part of South Carolina. And it features Lila Grace, who is a late 50s psychic living in a small town in South Carolina with all of the BS that that entails. And this was originally published in the Predators in Petticoats anthology, which came out a couple of years ago, um, edited by Emily Leverett and Margaret McGraw. Well, I have to admit, this is not how I expected my night to end, I said as I watched my boyfriend tighten a climbing harness around his waist and slide down a rope into a deep kudzu line mm -hmm. gully on the side of Highway 49. We were almost exactly halfway between Lockhart and Union, which is to say the absolute middle of damn nowhere South Carolina. And I was watching Sheriff Willis Dunleavy, the <laughs> aforementioned boyfriend and apparently secret rock climbing aficionado, slide down a rope to where Clyde Peabody, the owner of the originally named Peabody's Wrecker Service, stood beside an overturned vehicle about 30 feet below us. We'd been finishing up a dinner at this new Italian place called Luigi's in Union, when the radio in Willis's Prius went off. I may have made some threatening statements about him letting some asshole caught in a speed trap interrupt date night, but I only met about, meant about half of them. But when Ethel told us there was a car wreck that looked an awful lot like a fatality, I quit griping, mostly. 10 minutes later, I was standing by the back of the car as Willis took off his necktie and dress shirt handed them to me and then slipped on a spare uniform shirt to go with the boots he changed into. You always keep a change of clothes in the back of your car? I asked. Yep, he replied, pulling a complicated net of straps and buckles out of a bag and shaking it until it looked like the climbing harness it was. Ever since the first time I had to notify a victim's spouse that her husband was dead, while I was still wearing her husband's blood on my shirt. I sometimes forgot that before taking the job as Sheriff of Union County, South Carolina, Willis was a homicide detective in Milwaukee, a place that saw a lot more murders in some city blocks than the whole town of Union. Well, that makes sense, I reckon. I can't, and the climbing gear? I can't imagine there was a lot of call for that in the big city. Nah. That's all recreational. Me and Tommy were planning on riding up to Crowder's Mountain tomorrow and doing a little climbing. Want to come? He asked, grinning at me as he clipped something to something else and slid down the rope. No, I hollered at him. And what in the hell are you doing climbing rocks with a deputy barely half your age? Willis Dunleavy, you are 61 years old. You don't have anything left to prove to that youngin', and I am not going to deal with you falling off a mountain and breaking a hip. <laughs> he just grinned at me and waved, <laughs> then pointed to his ear and shook his head like he couldn't hear me. I gave up. There was no way I was going to win against a man who was married and divorced twice before we ever met. He learned a long time ago how to be deaf when it suited him. <laughs> I turned and walked back to the side of the road, the red flashing lights from the ambulance and fire truck bathing everything in an eerie crimson glow. Leon, what's the story? I asked as I approached the short man with the giant mustache standing by the fire truck. Leon Fuchs was the chief of the Lockhart Volunteer Fire Department. He was the man in charge on most accident scenes in this part of the country. I don't rightly know, Lila Grace, he said. We got to call it somebody had seen headlights down off the side of the road, and we got here about the same time as the highway patrol. He waved his hand over to the tall man in a big hat standing beside Clyde's tow truck talking to Mark Ferber, a South Carolina Highway Patrol officer who frequently rode the local highways. 
Officer Ferber and I might have had one or more less than friendly conversations about my speed over the years. <laughs> Do you know who called it in? I asked. Well, it ain't like the county 911 dispatch gives that information to the volunteer fire department. Now, I reckon even if they did, I wouldn't share, share it with you, even if you are stepping out with the sheriff, Leon replied, his mustache quivering in disapproval at my stepping out. Well, Leon, I can't say as I disagree with either of those statements, but we're not stepping out, I said, reaching down to pat the short man on his ruddy cheek. We're sleeping together. <laughs> Then I turned and walked over to the side of the bank and looked down. Willis had made it safely to the bottom and was standing next to an overturned car next to Clyde and a battery-operated lantern he'd carried down with him. I couldn't tell anything about the car except that its lights were on and pointed up the hill and it looked smashed all to hell. Y'all all right down there? I called. We're fine, Lila Grace. Clyde hollered up without turning around. You wouldn't know how to run the controls on a rollback, would you? I don't, but I reckon it can't be that hard. What do you want me to do? I got her hooked up. I just need you to go over to the side of the truck and run the winch for me. Why don't you come up here and do it? I asked, looking dubiously over my shoulder at the tow truck. I need to stay with the vehicle and make sure nothing comes unhooked. Sheriff says it'll mess up his crime scene even more if it falls down in here again. <laughs> crime scene? Yeah, Willis called up. Driver's still in the car. He didn't make it. Well, damn, I muttered, looking around. No newly minted ghost yet, but that didn't mean anything. Not everybody sticks around after they're dead, and even the ones that do linger don't always appear where they died. Sometimes they stay in a place they loved or near someone they cared for. Then sometimes it just takes them a while to show up, like they hadn't made up their mind if they were coming or going. All right, Clyde, what am I doing? It's easy, he said. Just go over to the side of the tow truck and look at the box of three handles on it. You ain't gonna be able to read the labels, not with all the grease and mud caked on them, but the one closest to the back of the truck runs a winch. Grab that handle and pull it down real slow. You ought to be able to hear the cable tighten if it's too dark to see. I can see fine, I said. Leon's got it lit up like Christmas up here. Okay, good. All you gotta do is push that handle down and hold it till the car comes up the bank. Don't try to pull it all the way up. We gotta let the rescue squad get the driver out first. Who is it? I asked. I can't see enough to know, but I feel like I know the car. It's a late model Camry, Clyde, Willis said. It's one of the most popular cars in America. It's going to look familiar. <laughs> oh yeah. Clyde deflated a little, his CSI hillbilly moment deflated by the big bad sheriff. I turned back to the tow truck, glad that the men down in the gully couldn't see me smile from that far away. I grabbed the handle Clyde described and pulled it down, heard the whine of a motor and watched as the steel cable laying across the black back of the tow truck pulled taut. The motor sound changed and other sounds like branches breaking came from over the hill as the winch started working in earnest. It took a solid two minutes, but then the battered Toyota crested the hill and crashed to the shoulder of the highway like a giant dead metal whale or something. A few seconds later, Willis and Clyde came into view over the edge, Clyde scrambling with hands and knees and Willis pushing on the skinny man's rump. Little record driver sprawled on the grass, rolled over on his back, panting. Looking back on it, Going down there might not have been the best idea I ever had. How did you get down there anyway, Clyde? I asked, taking in his lack of fancy climbing gear or rope. I put the winch in free spool and hung on to the hook. <laughs> then I just kind of kind of slid down, following the track the car made. Wasn't too bad going down. Yeah. Down's always the easy part, Willis said, standing bent over with his hands on his knees. He gave me a lopsided grin. I might call Tommy and beg off the rock climbing tomorrow. <laughs> I scowled at him. Good idea. 
And that's the beginning of On a Hill Far Away. There are ghosts. Spoiler. And strippers. <laughs> you know, that's not a spoiler in your books. It's really not, is it? No. You know, it's funny. Um, when I turned this story in to the editors of this book, the premise of Predators in Petticoats was badass women. And frequently either women who were killers or somehow monsters or misunderstood, whatever. Um, now did I put the whole friggin' story in here? Yeah, yes I did. I'm not going to read the whole friggin' story. You can buy the book. Um, <clears throat> but when I sent the story in, there's a scene later on that is, in fact, drawn from real life that features a adult dancing establishment in a double-wide trailer home <laughs> with steps made out of cinder blocks leading up to the door and the entire floor buckles a little whenever anyone went around the pole. <laughs> um, the real one is not in Union County, South Carolina. It's in Greenville, North Carolina. <clears throat> And I really should have known better and turned around when my GPS led me to the end of a paved road and says, you have reached your destination. And I had not. <laughs> I was staring at a dirt road going through a cornfield and there was just a little glow of light off in the distance. And I was like, well, it's either spaceship or a titty bar. Either way, there's a story in it. So I went in and I looked around and I turned around and I left and I thought, never again am I going to try to attend an adult dancing establishment in Greenville, North Carolina. <laughs> Did you have to bring your own brown bag? That's Greenville, South Carolina. <laughs> Been there too. Um, won't go back there either. 